So the first one is indeed a Paragon, I just had to check that. And it's in Sambar, Stag. And beautiful scales. And I'll show you the wedge end. It's not very neat, but it's the way they're made. i tell you what, it looks worse than, than it is on my viewfinder so hopefully this shaved it's a little bit loose I only pinned it last night and to get it to centre I need the wedge end tight and you tighten the wedge end and the uh, pivot end loosens you tighten the pivot end and the wedge end loosens so you're playing that game with it so it's a little bit loose Show you the razor and the grind. Uh, it's a beautiful razor. Uh, one problem, you may notice scratch marks up the top on both sides. And that's a bit disturbing that is because I've polished the inside of the scales where the razor touched but Maybe I should have sanded it and done some work on it and then polished it, but I mean it's shiny and smooth to the eye, but so I really don't know what to do. I don't want to unpin it. I mean I don't know if you can see the pinning. Trying to pin this and you've got raised parts all around the pinning area. It's just a nightmare. And I I thought this would pin really nicely, but took a lot of work and effort to pin it to um the scales are a bit of a nightmare but I do like the look and the feel of them now. Uh, I've been messing about on again on the um on the Hon Suite, the Nakayama. So I redid the uh John Elliott and I did this one with ten strokes, honed it with ten strokes. And this one I did the same ten strokes but it's just a bit of a nightmare this uh, this razor is. And for the lava, we'll be using whatever's in this. I'm pretty sure it's the Panama. The um, the blue one comes in a cube, and you cut it. You got to cut it yourself. It's supposed to be almond, I think, as well, but there's no smell. And I didn't even know I had this stuff to be the truth. Yep. Definitely lava. Yeah, it's got to be that stuff. It's super easy to use. Wow. I'm just putting some oil, God willing, get this shaves. Yes, nice, nice. We'll see how the shave goes. We'll reserve judgment. So this John Elliott, uh, last week I did it with 13 laps on the Hon Suiter. This, this week I did uh, 1K bevel set and 10 laps. Uh, I spent a lot of time on the Hon Suiter this week um, using different uh, Nagoras and slurries. Yeah, 
time there. Just shave him. No. No, it's not right. Which I don't mind because that means I get to carry on testing. And this, the um, Richmond razor, wasn't really HHT very well. It actually feels that feels really good. Well, this had ten laps, but I'm thinking of the success I've had with the Hon Sweeter doing like ten, thirteen laps. They've both been with uh, old Sheffield steel, like the soft stuff. Maybe I can only do soft, the soft type of steel. I'm not sure about the John Elliott, what sort of steel that is. Because it's a funny grind. Maybe, maybe it should just be used for um, soft steel. I'll go back to the Paragon. And these scales, um, when I first got these scales, they were bent and they were kind of crispy. They were like rock solid. And you could see any, if you did anything to them, they was gonna break. And so what I did, I submerged them in mineral oil. I left them in mineral oil for some weeks and it really worked, it softened them up. So they had some flexibility. So then I bent them the wrong way, the opposite way to the way they were bending. I'm not making sense, am I? So I bent them back in the opposite direction and I left them in that position for a couple of weeks. Um, and then they reverted back to their bent original position. So. I went through that process a few times of doing that. Putting them in mineral oil. And in the end, what I did was I soaked them again in mineral oil for like the third time for about a week. And I then just clamped them straight in a vise. And I left them in that vise with pressure on them for, I don't know how long, but it's got to have been a month. And then I've took them out of the vise and they're perfect. So straightened up. Um, I cleaned out all the all in between here, because God knows what was in there. Um, I used a toothbrush, not my toothbrush. A spare toothbrush and uh, I started off with alcohol which was a big mistake so I started to remove the black and um, so then I just swapped for water, soapy water But I was looking last night on uh, Google, the sandbar stag. Now it would be nice to get a full set of antlers. And uh, make some scales, man. It's illegal. And God knows I, I would never break the law. But I mean, there's no sandbar stags around here anyway. I think they're in Africa. 
Um, I do remember once I had a, one thing it actually haunts me is when I was in Greece one time and there was this a really strong bad smell on the beach and it was a turtle, a sea turtle that had died, probably out of a carrier bag and uh, it washed up and looking back I can't help but imagine I could have paid some local kids to rip his shell off I'd like to pay them a lot probably to do that and uh, I could have cut it up, sorted it up and posted it home to myself and I'd then have tortoise tortoise scales because you know, tortoise is um, it's not tortoise is it it's sea turtle and on top of that I am actually working with some tortoise now and it's bent and I've had that bent in the wrong direction for a few weeks and it's reverted now back to its bent status so what I'm going to do and I have to get on it actually because I want it for next week is I'm going to put the scales in um, warm or hot salt water and see what that does because uh, I believe that's what you're supposed to do when shaping tortoise or turtle. So I'll put it in warm salt water and uh, whether I bend it in the opposite direction or clamp it straight, I'm not sure, we'll see. But one of the scars has got an escutcheon plate, which is uh, it's made of silver. I think it's sterling silver. Thank God that one is actually dead straight. It's the other scale, so I'll get on that. But I've been in the workshop earlier today. I was in there most of yesterday, and I'm going back in there. So I'm messing around making compounds. And I'm basically making compounds that... I mean, I've already achieved it, but it's to remove grind marks. Um, and leave it with um, no grind marks. So I've made some good progress in the last few days. And that's how this was finished. So I used the 800 grip belt on this to remove the rust and um, add um, some pit in and uh, bits and bobs. And then I use my special compound which just wipes away the, uh, the grind marks and leaves mirror or it depends it depends how much work you put into it or how long you spend on it to how flat you want it or I want it so It's really interesting. I think that's it. That seems like a really quick show. Let's get under here. And the thing is as well that I'm I'm knocking off grind marks and even mirror finishes and this steel is tough. And it doesn't take kindly to that sort of stuff and yet it's working on this so I can't imagine I mean I've got a whole bunch of Wade and Butchers 
<sighs> so when I get round to those, then I'll be able to. Um, I mean, the last different type of steel that I worked on was at Iwasaki, and I couldn't believe how it worked on that really easily. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of perfect. Got back to the carites. It really is good stuff. Um, I probably had a lot more to say, but shaves up and I've forgotten. So, um, oh yeah, I'm still doing my uh, restoration video. And We'll see, how, we'll see how that turns out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later.